Hey everyone, BC Richfield here, coming to you live from London. It has just gone 5 p.m. Apologies for being a couple of moments late. Completely my fault, finishing up there with Muro. I have got just an unbelievable pleasure right now to introduce you, not only one of the, in my opinion, one of the best traders around in the space at the moment, but someone I'm lucky enough to consider a really, really good friend. And that's Trader Dank. So, you know what, I'm not even going to leave you on any more of a cliffhanger than that. I'm just going to get the legend on. He's going to just do a little bit of an intro, tell you a little bit about him, and then we're going to do the thing that you are all sitting there waiting for in your hundreds and thousands, which is learning a little bit more about how this legend trades the charts like he does. So, without further ado... Let me bring in my boy. There he is, Trader Dank. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What are you saying? How you doing, man? Good to have you here. I mean, I'm good to be good to be here, bro. Mate, really honored as well. Thank you so much for here, that, bro. We we we've been talking about doing this for a long time, man. I know we have, we have, yeah. We have, and it is just it's such a pleasure for me to have you on, man. It is so. Just let me just do this little intro, right? So for me, as someone growing up, passionately into sort of like forex, got into the crypto space a number of years back, and did a lot of really hardcore training under a few people I was fortunate enough to find. And one of them was SZ, who I know you're particularly close with and were a student of yourself many years ago. And I think something that I just want to say at the beginning of this, and I, I love SZ, I owe him a lot in terms of my development as a trader. You know, I think the whole space owes him a lot um, for all of his expertise, his skill, and definitely his shit posting as well, which is, I imagine, second to none. Uh, but I think that's true. Though. Some, <laughs> something that always gets me, man, is just, how, how you've taken that and you've just made this thing your own now, the way that you trade, the way that you look at the markets, your low tri time frame stuff. I mean, you know, I was sitting there with a group of mine and we've just been doing some like one minute chart scalping sessions. And I think we managed to get like nine, but I've been the nine, 10 R out of this session, really, really good session, not just for the returns, right. But just the way that the charts were moving, everything was flowing. And yeah, then I was yeah. looking over at you. I was having a chat with one of your guys from the country club over there, which is Dank's uh, group, which we'll give you all a link for at the end of this. And uh, you've been sitting there scalping the 15 minute charts on exactly the same range I'd be playing, except you pulled something like 30R out of it. <laughs> I remember thinking oh, then. Yeah. Right, it I remember, it's 27R. No, not yeah, yeah, that's, not bad. Not bad. that's not bad memory. I was three off, right? But uh, I thought I probably underplayed, overplayed yours by three and I had overplayed mine. But it's, uh, I knew at that moment I needed to know more about you and your, your views, right? Because. I've, I've, I've always just been impressed with how you look at the markets. You're someone that has a very fixed high time frame bias. You transfer that very quickly onto your low time frame charts. And then you are just, you're a real range specialist, right? You're targeting these consolidations. Not that I've not seen you kill the markets in, uh, in trending conditions, right? But I think one of the areas people get chopped up in a lot are ranges. And I, I see a lot of people come out on Twitter that are like, oh, range trading's easy, blah, blah, blah. But they're not posting charts. They're not posting their PL like a lot of people like yourself are. So what? Um, tell us a little bit about you, man, a little bit about Dank and how you kind of got on this journey to where you are today. So um, I actually started trading, well, I tried to start trading in 2014. And I remember seeing Bitcoin at $50. And I remember like, looking at Bitcoin at fifty dollars. I'm like, "What the fuck is this shit?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't didn't even bother with it. And I, I was I was fixated on 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 U.S. oil. And uh, it was when the the oil was 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 tumbling down at that time. So I didn't even know what I was doing. I was shorting and longing, shorting and longing, and I, I got wrecked. That's the honest truth. I got wrecked <laughs> badly. Like you know, you make some gains in it, but the honest truth is, I got fucked. <laughs> and um like on, on several occasions yeah after like losing like like endlessly for like months months upon months right then i gave mm. up in 2014 and i walked away from trading and, and i was at uni at the time as well so in 2017 around september i bought in bitcoin at the high in september around 3500 dollars. i i was the guy who bought the top because the next day we had the chinese fud yeah, yeah that was <laughs> and everything just went didn't it like yeah but the Chinese spot in 2017, and I made money on, on in 2017 on the way up, as like everyone was doing, because it was so easy. You just buy, you sell, you jump into another coin, and you just buy again, and you sell and jump into another coin. And mm -hmm. it, it seemed too easy. And that was the thing is, and I fell into the trap of, and I think everyone falls into the same trap, that trading is easy. Because in the bull market, everyone's a trader. Yeah. And uh, I remember like when Bitcoin went to 20K, you know, I was thinking 50K is around the corner. We can do this as well. And then the bear market hit, and we got fucked over. And mm -hmm. from there, like I was adamant to actually, you know, to find because it, to me it was like a system and the system beat me. And I'm not happy about the idea of that's beating me time and time again. So it happened in 2014, it's happening in 2018. Mm -hmm. So then, like, um, Trader SC, which everyone knows, he's my mentor. So I remember joining his group, Trader SC, and uh, he had a specific way of teaching. 
all right that it's not about buying and selling and whatever they the the, the the when you look at any project or any any chart or anything like that or bitcoin ethereum or any of the alts that you have or even stocks itself it's you can read the market by reading the the, the price action it's always the price action that tells you everything like it, he he instilled in our minds that price is like uh, tells you a story you just got to read the story so you have a bias from a high time frame and as you have your, your high time frame bias and you just sh and you shift it down to like day trades and you mm -hmm. play within that bias itself off like key levels and into key levels long and short and then scalping mm -hmm. was a bit more was a lot more advanced <clears throat> and i remember it was in uh, 2019 i picked up scalping he did uh, a session on he did one session on scalping and that was it and i was addicted <laughs> i was yeah i was addicted because well, the, because you know it's like i'm I'm a, I'm a type of person i don't have patience i don't have yeah, the patience to sit crazy. down yeah to, to hold the trade for like a couple of days mm -hmm. like doing a day trade is one thing because you have your you know you enter in off like an order block or something like that or like range low or support and then you, you know take a long and you got your targets you take your profits and that's it and then by the end of the day in a few hours you're done but then when he showed the scalping I'm like, whoa, we can make money off seconds, off like minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally it was. It was like, I don't have like, to keep this thing open for like a week or something, you know. Like yeah, that. I was like, this is not, this is the thing here. And then like scalping, right? <clears throat> the one thing with scalping, which mo most people like misconceive is that although you can make loads of like loads of R's and loads of gains in mm -hmm. terms of percentage, right? The reality is, is risk management comes number one. And, yep. and you, we learned that very quickly risk management is, is always going to be the key regardless of what kind of uh, trader you are. Mm -hmm. And one thing that like in, for me personally, when I go to scale, when I scalp, I use a third of a risk or half a risk, depending on the type of trader it is. And, and then that was it. And then once I got into scalping, it just became an, a complete addiction. But the problem yeah. is, which, yeah, yeah, the thing, the, the thing is when you, when you, when you look at, um, when you do scalping, if you're not in, in sync with the higher time frame. You miss what's going on. And mm -hmm. that's the issue. And, and again, that was another learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, throughout the, the bear market, you work, you work in because you're working in the shorts. Mm -hmm. When it was the beginning of the bull market, all right, around after April 2020, I was I was, I was still scalping, losing the, the, the synchronization of the higher time frame. Mm -hmm. And then it's only when it came to like 9K, I'm like, hang on a second. What the fuck, man? We went from 3K to like, you know, 3.5K, 4K to 9K. That's 5,000. That's, that's a 2X. Mm -hmm. And that was a long I could have done on a swing trade and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, then I switched bias then. And mm -hmm. that's when it was, it was, well, it's not late, but you're missing out a huge chunk. No, but it's a good lesson as well, isn't it? Moving forward. I mean, we just, we just had Muro on, um, who sends his love, by the way, to UNSZ, um, thinks the world of you. He was a legend, man. Really, really he is, man. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah, what I love, that legend. So love speaking to him, catching up with him properly, just again, pure alpha and, yeah. You know, when you got so many legends and stuff like that all in all in one space, I'm talking about you guys here, not myself. But I love the consistency of message that you can pick out of these things. Not losing sight, uh, not losing sight of your high time frame, right? And it's such a good lesson because people either don't consider it, or they don't consider it enough, or people get swept up in that bias and forget to keep monitoring it when it changes, right? Now, like you said, you know, you've missed that move from you know from 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 three k up. Right. You, you've missed a two X. And at yeah. that point, you're then realizing that you need to start flipping that long bias. Right. So yeah. the other thing is, if you're holding that kind of bias with the wrong high time frame bias, you're in a position where you're shorting all the wrong moves. Right. Or you're not longing the right moves. Right. That's you're right. shorting these small corrective moves. You're not getting the big juice that you want on the on the bigger, expansive legs higher. Right. So I think something just for the people watching this live. Big shout out to all of you as well. Some great numbers on, and, and for the thousands of people that will watch this on recording, is really do make sure you understand that high time frame bias. And one other thing as well that Dank's just spoken about that I relate to massively because it's very similar of my character. Um, you know, I, I'm someone as you can probably tell enjoys talking. I'm quite an extrovert person. You know, um, that really for me doesn't suit holding big swing trades. You know, when I really first got into trading, I was really torturing myself and. Although even some of the TA and that I had would be would be really you know would work out well holding those trades, I was killing myself scaling out of these positions because I just, I, just, I was struggling to hold that. And until you learn that, you need to learn where you fit in trading. You know, I have lots of people that will that will come to you and be like, ah, oh, you know, I really want to be a scalper. And I'm like, well, okay, how many hours can you bring to the chart? What time of day do you have to trade? Oh, I can't. You know, I've got yeah. I've got you know two kids at home and I've got a job where I'm working eleven hours a day and stuff like that. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. It doesn't yeah. mean you can't be a trader. Just look at something you can actually work on. And if you are yeah. going to trade, just be honest with yourself about what you can bring and what suits your character. Right. That's right. 
That's right. Absolutely. I mean, I got I got very lucky with my work as well because I, I was a, I, I'm a pharmacist by by profession. Mm. And so Another smart local... guy as well, man. Another smart oh, guy. Muro, oh, engineer, verb, chemical you're engineer. Do you know what I mean? Well, you're too kind, you are. But <laughs> like, yeah, well, what was good about my job is because I was a local pharmacist, right? So like, I, I'd cover shifts in different pharmacies, whether there's Lloyd's, Bells, mm -hmm. or Boots and stuff like that. And the, and one of the, the baddest, the coolest thing I, have, like, I, I had control is I could dictate what I want to do. Mm. So I'd be sitting in the back checking prescription in, in mid trade as well at the same time, or just like, <laughs> yeah, 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 like patients will be coming in. It's really bad to say this as well. But like, did you patients... accidentally prescribe someone Bitcoin where it was just on the mind and you were just just in the flow? It's like, it's a few times, but saying that right. So you know when I was when up my my Twitter was growing up right, and there was a geezer that came in. I didn't dox myself at that time as well. So this geezer comes in, and he's like, he's like, you sound like this guy from from Twitter. I go, who? He's like, this guy could trade a dank. And I'm like, it sounds like a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it sounds like a dickhead. And he's like, he's like, can you do me a favor? And I'm like, what? He's like, can you just say what's going on, champ? I'm like, I'm not saying that bullshit slogan. What's that? <laughs> I go, how can I serve you, man? I can help you, bro. You came into the pharmacy, not to talk about some random guy on online. Who is he? Who's <laughs> this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't want to duck myself. I didn't want people to know who I was and what I, what I was yeah. at that time. I and I was like very um because I was growing in it, so I didn't you do mm, I didn't want to put myself yeah. out there. It's, it's it's an interesting space as well, right? I mean, you know, I've only just recently, in fact, I made a promise to myself, you know, from Congress, I'm going to start showing my face. I think took a lot of heart from people like yourself doing it, and that. I think I always had this little. It's not as big for me, right? Obviously, the company I'm fortunate to work with, with the legends like Crypto Burb and stuff at the Burb Nation, yeah. these guys have huge shout out to Burb, man. He's a legend. Uh, a huge shout out to Burb, man. Yeah. He's one of the nicest guys you can ever meet and doesn't get anywhere near the credit he deserves for how smart that guy is. And also, just man, just the, the he's guy's built, he, He's built something, though. You got it, like, and, and he deserves a lot of respect as well. He I mean, does, like, man. He does. The problem is, like, I, like with, uh, for, for, I'm, I want to take a moment for Burb as well because, like, Mm. The, I met him twice, right? And both mm. times, he's such a lovely, humble guy. I've got nothing but love for that guy. Mm. And uh, yeah. and you you see, like uh, when when I, I've done it a few times, when I like uh, I've FF uh, like bourbon into an FF, and then someone will actually comment and be like, "Oh, X, Y, and Z." You know, you know, they, they talk shit. I mean, but it's, it's the nature of the game, isn't it? The bigger you get, people yeah. do about SZ and that. I mean, the guy will sit there and literally rip a market apart yeah. when, when all the other influencers are talking trash. The guy openly admits he's scaling out of a position because he got it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing like, is, you, no, you no, got to no. respect the guy who, who actually puts himself out there and says, I've got it wrong. Yeah, 100%. you got to you got to put your heart on your sleeve in this game sometimes. And it, you've got to take what comes in. And uh, it's one of the things I struggled with, you know, that, yeah. that transition to this. And then when I spoke to, to, to Burb about it, and he was saying, look, you know, you just you got to believe in what you're doing, the value that you're delivering to people, and you don't lose sight of why you're in this space. As yeah. professional traders, people make the misconception that you're in this space to earn money running groups and stuff like that. It's not the case. Running these groups is it's it's a pleasure. A it, it is, yeah. man. You're giving something because you're just trying to help someone else. You are. And and, and it, what a lot of people don't understand is journeys we went through. For me, I was very fortunate with people that I had. You know, both of you and I learned a lot from SC, um, you know, and we're very lucky with people you, that we've fallen in with along the way. I'm very lucky that I met Burb when I did. And, you know, what I've learned from that guy is it's unbelievable. The people that I trade with, people like yourself, right? But I think a lot of people, you know, focus a lot on the negative, especially in a space when you're in a bear market. There's a lot of anger out there, a lot of things going down. Yeah, and something yeah. that Burb's exceptionally good at is he, he says, you know, you step back and you take the take the higher time frame view of life, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Look at the reasons you're doing it. Don't get caught in the naysayers, people that just want to spread negativity. Focus mm -hmm. on the positive you can bring to people. And I mean, look, just like the Congress, this is his baby. This is his idea. 100%. He does it for free because he wants to bring people he's in. Doing, he's doing this for everyone as well. He doesn't have to do it. So shout yeah. out to Bird, man. What and and the same as, same as legends like you, man, coming on here and, and giving up your time. Like, Dude, Muro, do you know what I mean? Signing in from Germany over there. Do you know what it is, though? Like, it's like it's like this, right? Like, you, you would understand this really, really well. And uh, the guys who are coming in, who's just recently joined the, the space, they don't understand it yet until the next cycle. Mm -hmm. But... When when we've been in this in this position of, of of hardship, we've been we've seen how what a bear market is and how painful it becomes, mm -hmm. and we understand you want to give up, but like we but like guys like me, you, Burb, SC, Muro, XO, anyone else, right? Mm -hmm. They they we all understand that there's a massive gain to, to you know to to get out of this. All it, all it requires is just patience, and it's like we're doing this to help everyone out. 
just hang in there hang in there and trust me you will make what you want to make you will come out of any financial debt you have or whatever you have to have a better life for yourself and that's mm. the key that and i think that's what unites us as a, as a whole man and i think you know <clears throat> at the end of the show i'm going to ask you for kind of one bit of thing to share you know for the guests to take take yeah, yeah, away. Of course, 100%. but i think that's such a good point that you make there such an important yeah. point that, that people need to take away from it and funny enough again something that came up in the chat with muro was this idea of patience he's saying look yeah. at the moment for the way he trades the market's just not showing him what he needs to step in so he's sidelined yeah. right yeah. there's nothing wrong with that you know there'll yeah. be people like yourself that can trade every day and you and i day traders that's what we live for other people yeah. that look at higher time Time frames. Yeah, yeah. One of the big things is don't kid yourself. Don't step into trades that you're kidding. So you're trying to fit. You yeah, know, if you're trying to force it out. Thing, yeah, yeah. yeah, wait yeah. It, man, wait for it to come to you. And Muro was saying, wait till it's so obvious. And I'm sure this is me putting words in his mouth. But wait till it's so obvious, it slaps you in the face, yeah. right? You know, because they're the trades you want to take. And don't 100%. waste your time losing energy and negativity, blowing your account, going into trades that you don't hit your triggers. Because then, when the good ones do come along, you, you miss it. A negative mindset. Exactly. You miss exactly. it completely, and and the thing is, like, with, like with any with any trade itself, like it's like uh, when it comes to like like a bull market, mm -hmm. you see shallow pullbacks, and those shallow pullbacks, those are the ones you want to long. You long, it comes into like an order block, or it comes off of like a range higher or something, or a support and resistance, and then mm -hmm. he's, you know, that's your trigger. It's showing bullish market structure. You off you go, mm -hmm. and it's the reverse for the bear market. You get shallow pullbacks. We're not pullbacks. Shallow uh, spikes in the market. Mm -hmm. or fast spikes in the market that, that you know mm -hmm. that's not right and then you look at where it's come off it's come off another a support resistance a range high it's come off mm -hmm. like again an order block on the on a bearish order block and you just you just wait for the setup be mm -hmm. patient it, you don't need to get like seven hours eight hours trades if you get one hour trade here or there that's mm -hmm. enough to be profitable that's what it is yeah 100 percent. And, and and alluding to the point you're making there as well i think really important for people to understand where what your what your place is in trading. So as Dank just said, when you're on this journey and you're learning and you want to come through it and you, you start to not see the light at the end of the tunnel, you need to remember that like with any profession, it's what you put into it that you can get out. It's not mm. the case that just the lucky 1% make it. The reason 95% of people fail in trading is because they either don't have the patience, don't have the commitment, won't invest in their education, won't try and push and better themselves. Every week they're coming to the charts with a new strategy, a new shiny indicator or something like yeah indicate indicator trading can work brilliantly with confluence and that you know i'm someone that you know like yourself um i'm predominantly a price action trader right but something i get a lot of value out on the higher time frames is looking at divergences yeah. it's something i've always traded for years you know and i use the b pro for that i've used rsis for that over the year bits and pieces there's so many different ways to trade and there's so many ways that you can become successful with trading but the consistency the mindset and the work ethic have to be there you know i share messages with you sometimes Times at you know seven o'clock in the morning while you're getting prepped and you're getting ready to go live with people over there at the country club and then uh i share messages with you at 10 p.m at night when you're there and yep. you're throwing on random live streams going you know what guys boom let's just do a random one i want to talk about this range and mm -hmm. and people will see you and they'll see you pop up on twitter with your posts and bits and pieces and you're running a business you're running a community you're trading every day you're a professional trader you're you know i hate this word but you're an influencer in the most positive yeah, term yeah, yeah. and you've got you know you've got your family around that you've got a family like all these things to consider like we were just talking about with muro you know it's it's a lifestyle as well as it is a dedication right but i think mm -hmm. that message of just like with anything uh, there's a saying and it's so cheesy right but it's you know the 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 night is darkest before the dawn and I work with a lot of people, and I was there myself as well, <clears throat> like you said, about leaving the space. I've been in some really dark, low moments when I thought I had everything figured out. The market's flipped 180 on me. And, I, you know, I felt lost off the back of that. Um, but moments like that actually make you as much as the success does, right? The same way as when you're journaling. Look at the losers. Go back over every loser with just this insane level of detail. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how you work out the consistencies of what you're doing wrong. You know, yeah, yeah. why was I doing that when there's clearly double, you know, equal highs there? Or why am I shorting at this point when there's, a, you know, a naked or an untapped high or low over there, you know? And then yeah, you start... Like, like yeah. 100%. But you know what? When you have that moment, people want to delete a chart. Or people want to step away from from it and you know i do this on my live streams i've seen you do it on your live streams as well reviewing these losing trades i know bert does it and a lot of other people i respect do it not because you know you want to kind of put yourself down on these streams right and of course you open yourself up to abuse but i say let the haters hate 
Let yeah. the people that want the value out of it, that want the lesson to learn, let them get the truth of it, right? Yeah. Why did I make this error? Why was I here? Was I too early? Was I too late coming into it? Have I ignored a key point of confluence? And genuinely, as one of the best range traders in the game, I'm really, really interested to share with people because I could just sit and talk your face off all day, do you know I can? Yeah. I want to give, I want to give these guys some charts, right? And I want to let you do your thing and just, I'm going to... I know you're in a recent. I know you're in a. You've been in a short setup recently, haven't you? I yeah, yeah. I've got two. I've got two shorts. Yeah, I've got two shorts running. I got one of them, which is a a, a day trade at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's like a scalp day trade kind of thing, and the second one is more of a swing trade. I've got, which is like, a, it's pissing me off that we haven't hit target yet. <laughs> <laughs> See, ladies and gentlemen, look. As professional traders, people control their emotions. It doesn't mean they don't have them. It doesn't mean we yeah. don't get annoyed. Uh, you just need to know how to put that in a little box. Do whatever you need to do to calm yourself down. Smoke twenty Marlboro Red, or you know, go for a walk <laughs> with a dog or something, right? But I. I heard you got a thingy, um, a thingy, uh, a partnership with Marlboro. Mate, do you know what I said after having Muro on? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you coming on as well. That's it. I felt I was kind of rushing Dude. around and some cigarettes, but I didn't have time. But that's the thing is, you know, you know, we're trading, right? Like, you, you, like I don't know about you, but I smoke a lot more while I'm trading compared to when I'm not trading. Yeah, so I mean, I I still I'm fortunate in one respect. I'm fortunate. I gave up smoking a few years back. Decided that. Okay, oh, you spoke with me, didn't you? No, 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 wait, wait. The story has. A okay. Twist. <laughs> very, very proud of that. I went two years completely not smoking. Then the typical things, <clears throat> you know, I'm someone that's happy to admit their flaws. You know, I, I like a drink. I'm not, I'm not a crazy, consistent drinker. But when I get the opportunity to go out with like-minded people, I like to have a few jars. Yeah. And when I do, I have to reach for a cigarette. And you know what? That's, that's the vice of it, right? But the strange thing is now... If I'm sitting at home, if I'm in the office, wherever I am, unless yeah. I've had that drink or the thing, I don't really, I don't get that craving for a cigarette anymore. You know, see, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a social smoker, a hundred percent. And you know what? The worst kind of smokers, but I am a social smoker that will go and buy my own cigarettes, especially once I've smoked all of yours, Dank, like in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> like in Paris. <laughs> I, ended up, I ended up arriving back in London at St Pancras, and I had a little Paddington story, and I'd like three packets of like half open cigarettes in there. And I realized that I basically bought all these things, ended up keeping them in random places and then just smoking all of yours anyway. But ah, it was all good though. But the, but the cigarettes though, that was some good cigarettes though. The, the it was ones. some really good cigarettes, man. Mm. Really good cigarettes. But I mean, before I digress too much, right. I think I, I'd really like to plug the viewers in to, to what you're doing with this trade. I saw you post this thing live, like you do with all of your trades. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, let's, let's share, let me share your screen. Right. Right. Cool, yeah. Let me add this in and then that's it. Perfect. We're in. Cool. So can you run our fine viewers, the people that are here to see you, to be part of this through your thought process, how you're looking at this in terms of almost like a top down, really? What's yeah, got so, you to this point and what's your execution? So what happened was, right, so like uh, I've, got, I've got two trades, as you, as you guys are well aware. I've got mm -hmm. a swing trade and I've got a day trade. So let me, let, let me talk about the swing trade itself. So the first swing trade is from range high to range low. That's what I'm aiming for. The reason why I'm using this, right? So, like, like I believe that price is always in a range, right? When I say price is always in a range, is that you got a range band environment. So, for example, let me draw this out. You got a range high over here and a range low over there, and price range bands in this area. We break out for the upside. We find some support, a bit of a deviation there. All this is all support there. Shoots a bit higher, but the problem is, right? When it shoots a bit high, it doesn't break market structure quite like mm -hmm. carefully. It, 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 it because this high itself. In, in particular is where you know the key highs you know where all the stops are resting but instead it just it rejects right off this area of, of consolidation right it doesn't even come in there that's how shit it is but almost that fair value gap isn't it i think yeah, just really before, it doesn't even I, feel that the, 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 i think it does though i think it, it does if i correct this low over here do we fill it up? No, no, we don't actually. No, yeah, you're right. Oh, so it, that was. I remember looking at that exact thing, and I was thinking it's got to come up into that. I was waiting to hit that short, and it just, you know, market. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. The problem was right. The, the moment we end up losing monthly open, right for like this month, uh, November's uh, open. I was like, oh shit, this is, and it, and it was a fast drop. So it was too late to actually you know, catch anything. So I didn't, I didn't trade this down move itself. I just mm -hmm. sat on the sideline and just watched. I just watched the whole thing, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's see what happens, mm -hmm. and then. This is where it gets interesting. So this original uh, range band environment here, where we play for like two weeks, two and a half weeks, mm -hmm. we broke out of it, come back, we finally step back into it. And what becomes a bit of a key, a key player, right? If I just delete this stuff, make this a bit more nicer so you guys can see. Um, yeah, so then I was like, all right then, so price is, is coming, is, <clears throat> price came back down, right? Does a bit of a deviation of the mid range, right? And I always say like the way price works, right? It's from low to mid, 
mid to high and his vice mm -hmm. versa if his range bounding you become from the high whatever the deviation is it will step back in play back to mid and then break down and play back to the low and it will just keep ping-ponging till it's ready to break on the upside on the downside or on the mm -hmm. upside whichever side it is and then that's when you play at the breakout play but then i, I started seeing that but if price is came, coming back in i always ask myself the fuck are you doing back in the in the range because if you're supposed to be bullish you should be carrying on like this high should have held over here we should mm -hmm. hold this high, re regain the monthly open, and then step it, step in, going into. And you want to see buyers stepping in, right? <clears throat> what you're That's saying it. is, if you're breaking out of this, right, and there's the fuel there ready to move higher, then you're not going to be dipping back into where you've come from, right? If you're gassed up and you're ready to go then mm. that thing should be taken off. The moment it exactly. shows that weakness, right, that's when yes. you get interested. Exactly, exactly. So then so, so then, I start look, when you look at the one hour, you start seeing that how price is back in this range. Mm -hmm. So you see like how it comes from into the mid-range itself. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is the mid-range, does a deviation, steps back up, goes into mm -hmm. range height, but it gets capped around this area of consolidation over here. Mm -hmm. So then, so I start looking at price, right? And I was like, okay, how is this working out? Let me delete this shit. Then I was like, okay, so this is the area consolidation, and you can see how price gets capped by it. It comes, mm -hmm. this consolidates, comes back down, breaks back up, runs the highs of these bit, breaks mm -hmm. back down, runs the, the thing at the range high of this consolidation, and then finds resistance and keeps finding resistance, but it steps mm -hmm. back into the range bound environment. So then I was like, all right, then if it's, if it's stepping back into the range bound environment, we're going to end up playing from high to mid and then mid to low. Eventually, mm -hmm. one way or another, it's a swing trade because you know we're playing on off a weekly range itself. I entered in like I was looking. I saw this retest over here. I'm like, if you come back into this range high, I'm happy mm -hmm. to buy into it. But I, I missed this high over there. I got in on, on this candle. My stop loss was based off this high itself. That's my invalidation there because if we come nice. out and take out these highs, and I'm I reckon we're going to take these highs itself. And then it's, mm -hmm. it's breaking out the high, so it's not coming back into the range. Mm -hmm. Then I just held that range. I held that range, and all it is, you can clearly see. Comes back down, whoops. Comes back down, plays around the seventy-five percent range. Mm -hmm. Comes at the mid range, and that'll be target one, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd be target one would be twenty-five percent range, target two would be like mid range. This would be target three, and that'd be target four, right? Mm -hmm. Level to level, just literally play within one level, and at any moment, fucking hell, what am I doing? Are you yeah. looking to take some sort of? So you're using those levels to then shave some profit. If you then get the triggers that you want, you think you're going down to the next level. You then compounding, you adding to that position as you go down. Ideally, yes. So, like uh, on on the weekend on the Saturday, like this would have been a compounding position there because I'm I'm like I'm finding this is acting resistance at the seventy five percent range. It this swept those deviate. highs as well, didn't it? Right, those it highs did, to the left, took out the liquidity. Right, looked like it was gearing up for a move lower. And like you alluded to earlier, in terms of how slow these things can move, sometimes right, you've stepped in here, you've got mm. into that range, you've taken that first twenty five percent, but then look at how price dropping into the sort of the second quartile before it hits the 50, the EQ, how it just yeah. hugs that top side, right? Just, it, yeah. just frustrating the hell out of people, right? Getting people to close positions, get out. And then when it's ready, those drops can just be aggressive, can't it's, they? That's really big. aggressive as well. And then mm -hmm. the moment we're like, look, so like I missed this out, right? When, when I was had family over the weekend, and I said, okay, if you retest this low, I'm happy to enter in with a stop loss here mm -hmm. and then play it back to mid range, look for the mid range breakdown and come back down lower. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, you know, we had the whole FTX situation that's going on and the mm -hmm. whole um, Ethereum dump coming from these hackers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't given me an opportunity to compound itself. So I miss out compounding opportunities. But at the moment, right, all I'm doing is tightening my stops. I mean, this was the original trade itself. And my stops at the moment, I've tightened it to these highs over here. That's nice. where I'm, I'm, yeah, that's why I'm looking to go wrong. And then at, at each level, uh, the 25%, the mid range, and at 75%, I'm just taking profit, small portions, and then nice. just keep going down. And that's what I'm doing. So, but having that as a bias, as that's a short, and I'm expecting to go back, back to range low mm -hmm. because the magnet in price now really comes down to range low. There's liquidity resting over here to mm -hmm. be taken out. Um, which was that to be taken out on this side over here. Do we do something like this, take out the liquidity and then regain and hold above it and then show us bullish market structure? And then I look, I say, you know what? If that's the case, I'll take the whole the profit out, cut the trade. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to actually sit by and see whatever happens. Mm -hmm. So that was like the whole swing trade itself, which is not really my type of style. But then it's but how then you get into the day trades off the back of that, isn't it? Right. So again, exactly. like we're talking to again, and I'm going to go a little bit broken record on people here. I was the same with Muro, but it's such an important point. High time frame bias low time frame trading. I see people getting chopped up to ribbons 
yeah. focusing too much on the low time frames they're trading, worrying every time they see a high or a low get broken. They're watching these micro moves when instead what you've got here is a beautifully played out, well explained, clear swing trade with clear defined targets and risk. Yeah. Again, risk, guys, know where your risk is. Yeah. Now you can climb inside that data and you can say to yourself, fine, well, now I'm going to use that to refine and find some day trades. Exactly, exactly. And that's what happened today. So like today itself, right? So I, I know the mid range of the weekly is around 1161, 1162. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking at the day trade, I start working out my range. And then the blue range over here that which everyone can see, that is last week's Monday's range. Mm -hmm. And clearly what, what what's happened in terms of price, we've come back down, takes that Monday's low, holds into it. I mean, it didn't even retest October's low. So that black line over here is October's mm -hmm. low. And he just lost it in one go. And mm -hmm. it's made bearish market structure, taking out these loads and it's start showing me bearishness. Mm -hmm. And where it's come down into is off this area here. And that's like what we call an order block, a bullish order block. But like to me, that's another range. Like mm -hmm. everything price is always in a range. And if I show mm -hmm. you on, on the one hour, literally all I've done is just highlighted the the highs, the highs of the of the order block and mm -hmm. the low itself. And that's a range bound environment. And then literally bring it down to the onto the 15 minutes. And how I entered the trade was literally was watching this while the, the game was on. And um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was watching. I was like, "Look, for for me to enter into a long, right? I need to. If it regains up to here, right? If it comes into here, regains this, I can take a scalp trade back into Monday's low. That would be like a target there. As a quick scalp trade in and out. That's it. Nothing else too crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. like, um, it's a small move over here, and whatever the deviation is would have been like the the um, my stop loss there. A one hour trade. I'm quite happy with that. So when mm -hmm. I was watching this, I'm like, okay. We've, we've wicked into it, right? This is bearish, right? We've wicked into it. This is supposed to hold, but mm -hmm. I'm going to watch this, right? If, if this is going to be like the, if we're going to step back into it, why are we wicking into the into this block over here? We mm -hmm. should actually be closing into it. Mm -hmm. So I watched this a little bit longer, right? And then I start, see, so I start marking out. Well, let me delete that. Something on another screen. So it's, for me, it's a bit weird. So I went on the five minutes, right? I start looking at the five minutes and I start, okay where what's causing the problem like where's where's resistance in it so i use this low over here and you can see that's where it's causing resistance and then mm -hmm. it start to form on the lower time frame lower highs that's the uh, the the thing the high lower mm -hmm. low lower high lower low and it keeps going down to we make a new yeah. lower high and so now like well obviously this is now finding support off the mid-range is normal to happen so i was quite confident all right so we stepped back in we, i was quite confident to enter in enter in over here right i said look mm -hmm. this is like a, a now an order block i'm expecting this higher to hold in place. If mm -hmm. we take this out, I can flip the trade to go back up. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal. And then now I took, I took some profits over here. It was like a, like just over a one hour trade. Mm -hmm. Step back down, comes into 25%, taking out these lows there. Now I'm like, it's back in the range. And now any pullback, I can look to compound it from a day trade into more of a, of a bigger trade. So something mm -hmm. like this, come into here, off these lows, steps back down. This would be my trigger for me to enter in. Stop loss, prob I'll probably bring it over to here. Play mm -hmm. it back into 25 level to level to the mid range and then play it back mm -hmm. down to range low. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, such a good and clear explanation for people, really, I think, about <clears throat> trading level to level. In fact, I did a I did a short thread on it in the build up to Congress talking about what level to level trading means to me. It's something people often ask me a lot. And like yourself, and obviously being a fellow student of FZ, you know, although not having the pleasure of knowing him personally, I should should uh, iterate, unlike yourself. Mm -hmm. It's it's that level to level thing, that range trading thing for me is what really clicked with me when I was looking at the markets, yeah. taking historical ranges, range patterns, looking at that. And then the same with order blocks. And something I noticed or that I studied a lot over the years with order blocks is how you get the one you're using at the top, for example, you've got that yeah. order block and you're saying yeah. to yourself, the price really shouldn't be coming back through this. If the orders in there are strong enough and my directional bias is correct, then, you know, there's a lot of things written out there saying, you know, typically you wouldn't see an order block violated much beyond its EQ, its 50% yeah, yeah. range, right? And again, like when I'm looking to take targets for trades, when I'm looking for stop lots, when I'm looking for take profits, sorry, I'm looking at those quartiles as well. And I'm expecting a move down to the mid range too, because quite yeah. often with order blocks or where you see those key consolidations, mm -hmm. very rarely if the price is going to really purge below that, if it's going to reverse, you'll normally see it in that upper half of the of the fifty percent. So, I find that really really interesting. So, like with this one, you've got your clearly defined target, right? You've said to yourself, as you've explained really clearly, look, I know what I believe is capping the price. I'm watching price break down. Funny enough, when you looked at it on the fifteen minutes as well, 
you can just you can see on there right you can see by the candle wicks the yeah. aggressive selling that yeah. you get when prices coming up into there right and now you've decanted that down and you've dropped that down onto your five minute and you kind of said to yourself right now I'm stepping in here I know where my risk is yeah and like you said the great thing about trading this way which I really love is if you're wrong you're wrong early then you get your confirmation you can flip the other way exactly right? yeah it's flip bias, it's, it's flip it's hunting liquidity somewhere right yeah. whether that's up or whether that's down if you're able to get into the market and you're able to be nimble at the right point mm -hmm. you can very easily turn a losing trade into a break even or a winner right 100 percent. i mean an another thing that actually uh, another thing i had to add to it that i added as compliments as well was that if you look here where's midday so this is this is this here was the daily open right this this line here and you mm -hmm. can see how we found resistance off the daily open mm -hmm. like if it was to be bullish reclaim the daily open then i'm like okay i i'm wrong completely to actually look for shorts i should mm -hmm. actually be looking for for longs and this will be a confirmation to play back up to here and then we'll see how the rest of the day goes but the fact that we you know we found resistance off it once over here acted resistance again twice this was acting as resistance the third time give me a lower high on the lower time frame i'm like mm -hmm. you know what this is going to lose. It's a range man environment over here. You can scalp this on the, on the one minute, 15 seconds, mm -hmm. lost this low there. Off we go. And it was, <laughs> it's literally you just, you're just following the time frame and you're just following it there. Cause I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with the bias of the, that Ethereum USDT is bearish using the mm -hmm. weekly range itself. Mm -hmm. uh, why am I bearish? Um, not just, because, not just because it just dropped and like, why do I think there's still a bit more downside? Um, it's because literally we've, we've lost the one, uh, the, it's gone the one hour, the mid range, we lost the mid range itself mm -hmm. and you retest into the mid range, right? It comes back into this area here, breaks down. I can take a short back down to 25% of the range and then back to range low. And mm -hmm. that's what it is. So because we're below the mid range, I'm, I'm going to be bearish looking for shorts, but if we get back above the mid range, then I'll reflect the bias. And I'm like, okay, let's play back to longs. We, you know, take out all these inefficiencies over here and then mm -hmm. work it level to level. And that's all mm -hmm. we got to do. Yeah, 100%, man. I think uh, I think something with with people when they're stepping into space, when people are learning, especially when people are, you know, watching, you know, our streams, watching your streams, SE, people like that, XO, mm -hmm. I think people that really understand their niche within trading, and I always say this, I always, I always want to make sure that I've got a broad and shallow knowledge across trading, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be someone that just pigeonholes themselves into just one particular discipline, but... The discipline that I have, day trading, scalping, I need to know that my strategy, my knowledge of price action in that respect has to be incredibly deep. Yeah? yeah, I don't want to be naive and dismiss other factors of the market because I don't trade them, fundamentals, swing trading, high time, because it all plugs in, right? News events, shift, shift markets, obviously all of that, right? Yeah. Investing, tokenomics, right? But for me, I'm a price action trader, a chart trader, right? So I take my high time frame bias, I decant that down. I'm either using key points of interest by, via ranges, key naked highs and lows, order blocks to watch for reactions with price. And similar to yourself, I'm waiting for price to either have a confirmed rejection in my eyes, I'm looking for like a liquidity sweep, a break down and then a retest that I'm happy to short level to level. Yeah, if I'm yeah. wrong, price reclaims an order block or gets back above the level I'm interested. I'm watching for that breakout play, right? To have a key kind of level. Now, I know a lot of people, and especially yourself included, SC is another one, make it seem very, very simple. You know, you're looking at, you're like, look, as you just breeze through that there, really clean, high time frame. I've got this level. This is where my bias comes in. Here's my range, right? This is how I'm setting my range. If I see these triggers here, I'm going short here and I've got predefined lines and targets. If I lose that, I can reverse it and go higher. I mean, if you had to, I mean, it's something I was kind of saving towards the end of the stream. I know we've got kind of like 15 minutes left, but I think it's such an interesting point. Yeah. In terms of a takeaway for people to have, you know, people that are looking at this now and they feel inspired by what they're seeing, by what you're saying, and it doesn't surprise me there'll be a lot of those people. If you were to say to them kind of one bit of advice, you would say, you know, what, what would you say to people that are looking to kind of take their trade to the next level in this respect? Would you tell them to make sure that they've got their high time frame bias down, that they really understand where to draw their ranges? Because I see people drawing ranges from all kinds of crazy places, you know, like, and then they're saying like, oh, we didn't get to 50% here, but it's like, yeah, but you've taken that from a wick and you've anchored that onto a body. Yeah. And, uh, you know, unless you're well. you, 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 you you to body, you got to stick to bodies. If you're going to take wicks, stick to wicks. Mate, same as like uh, trend lines, right? You'll see people yeah. one minute, they'll put it through everything and then the body of a candle or you, you, there's nothing to say there's a right or wrong per se. You need to back test these things. You need to understand it. But when you do it, you have to be consistent, right? So yeah. 
yeah, I mean, what what would you what would be a gem for you? There's two things I'd really love you to cover. One thing you'd really advise people on what to focus on to really, really make themselves to really give themselves that chance of reaching that financial independence. And the other side of it is how you would advise people to draw ranges, how or how Trader Dank draws ranges. How do I draw ranges? That's a, that's an interesting one. That's like that's my secret. That is now. Um, yeah, I've gone yeah, in. Yeah, I've gone into the but you oh, know, what? I, don't, I, don't, you, I can't have you giving up all your trades. You know what? No, 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 no. You know, for bird nest, fuck it, I'll do it. Just, 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 well, what, just would, you, what would you advise? Yeah, what would you say to people that are doing it? So whether it's consistent, whether people are taking, I, 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 I'll use this one as an example, right? So, like, Please, I, yeah. as I was discussing, right, this is like a weekly range, right? So when I show it on the daily, it doesn't really show you everything in in in, in depth. Why I picked this particular low here. Mm-hmm. And this particular high, because some people will be asking, but hang on a second, why not pick this low here and this high here or this high there and in this low here? Or, you know, there's so many swing highs and swing lows you can, cho- you can choose mm-hmm. from. But what I tend to do, right, is like when I do like uh, when I have my bias, I have a top, I do a top down analysis. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that's how you build up your bias as well. So I, I would yeah, start yeah. for like the monthly, right? Or like if you if you got like um, pro, you can get the court, the, the, yearly quarterly whatever but i start from a higher time frame and i start working down and i start looking at where price is so for me it's like okay i'm looking at what price is doing right and price is capped somewhere mm-hmm. there's a there's a particular candle that does all the capping there's the, the particular candle where price is is, is is causing it to create a range and mm-hmm. what is that range so for, for example in this but in this particular uh, thing for, for the monthly i'm like okay so this high itself caps that market you can see that this high causes resistance resistance and then we sell off okay mm-hmm. but then there's a low which is going to cap the market i wouldn't pick this low here the reason why because that's a lot of deviation when we have a sell off then right mm-hmm. i wouldn't pick this low here because the price where we are right now will be below this uh, will be below this low so which means that if we retest this it wouldn't go back lower it mm-hmm. doesn't really give us the full concept of what's going on the low mm-hmm. i would pick would literally be like the same candle it would be literally that the same candle because price is stuck mm-hmm. within that monthly range so mm-hmm. this is uh, uh, july's range so if we're hunting liquidity, we've hunted July's highest liquidity. We've got, um, um, sorry, um, August. Is that fucking? Yeah, that's August. Yeah, I was fucking losing my month here. If we go back to school, we're taking out August. <laughs> we're taking out August's low liquidity in in in, uh, in September. September in in October, we took out the thingy, like um, the liquidity again, and mm-hmm. we keep taking the lows and lows and lows. And it just mm-hmm. so happened in, in in November, we took out the highs of of um of um. Of October, and we think mm-hmm. on the lows of October. Where's the next liquidity? Well, it mm-hmm. has to be here. This is mm-hmm. the ne- next uh, liquidity, but that's where magnet the magnet in price is going to be. Mm-hmm. And once we lose this, the next uh, liquidity is here. Where the price comes up and does a bounce up, whatnot. But if you start breaking down from here, you're like, mm-hmm. hang on a second. If I'm going to take a short, where do I? Where am I confident? To say mm-hmm. I can take profits there, hunting liquidity. Well, it has to be off this low. So that's yeah. how I would uh, build my range. So then, when I have a higher time frame base, uh, 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 basis, I'm like, okay, I draw my range, and it's like the mid range. We're losing the mid range. We're going back down, and you play within level to level. Mm-hmm. Then what I do is I go down to the next the next uh, time frame, which would be the weekly. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking at where the current price is. So, for example, forget this candle actually even existed, but this current candle there, what's capping? Like, you know, where's where's it playing in? It has to be in a range because I believe mm-hmm. price is always in a range and it doesn't mm-hmm. change. Whether it's a breakout, there's a mm-hmm. range it plays into. And then, so I'm like, there's a particular weekly candle that has to be causing the range. And for like, for me, right, and I was using this this high here before, back mm-hmm. in, in when, when we were over here, I was mm-hmm. using this high here because I can see this candle here took out yeah. the lows there. So price is within this range, right? Then it, it breaks out. So then what happens is the motherfucker decides to go back in the same motherfucking range. <laughs> it does. But look, look at the capping on the market. So you and I, <clears throat> and if there's anybody on the stream as part of the Nest will attest from this, we we have similar levels, you and I. Not because I just always copy you, although it probably no, no, make my life we, easier. We see but... things very similar. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> And then you look at just that top line. I just wanted to stop you on this just because of this, right? Look, how you've got that range. When you were trading that range, something I use a lot are inside bar patterns, right? So you get your mother bar, your inside bar is then the smaller candle afterwards. Very often you see those in the formations of ranges because price wants to take the highs before reverting to the lows, moving between liquidity. Now, this top red line here, 
And uh, funny enough, we've got a good friend of mine who I trade with and who is part of our group, Lord Tang. Bro. Oh, <laughs> you know, I get rings on YouTube on this. I you get know, rings I big time. But I do as well. And even before I saw your streams, I use pink as well. I don't know what it is. Right, to me, it's red. I, I'm I, I, like... You're colorblind. I do it through choice, right? I thought I thought you were supporting <laughs> my choice of feminine colors, right? And then I turn around and I find out you do it because you're bloody colorblind. I was, I was like, man, no, I thought... But I thought legitimately, like, to me, is is I know where the color is, but then now, because I'm so used to it now, I just use it all the time. So, like, like in, in the group as well, in in the country club as well, they they rip onto me. It's like, bro, what are you using pink for? They do, man. There's some good, there's some good characters you got over mm. there, man. But look, before I digress too much, right? What I love about this is when you're looking at that range, and this is not for the benefit of us, but for the viewers certainly, is as you're taking that level, you see that top red line or pink line that that Dank's got on the chart. It's not when you look at that, he's trading this at the origin of the move. When price is consolidating there, that's the question you're asking. You're looking at those long downside wicks that are coming in, liquidity is getting taken, and price is unwilling to move. When you see that high time frame close outside of that area and price run away from it, you don't get a retest, meaning that when price comes back into that area for me, I'm interested, right? And you can see in the following candles, you get those big bearish drops into it. You get those small body candles yeah. and to phrase SZ, as he says, which I think is a brilliant statement, small body candles lead to big body candles, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Now, when you see that, you see those downside wicks holding there. Now, you can tell there's enough buyers under there that it's supporting price, right? Yeah. When price runs back up, fills the inefficiency to the left, when it drops aggressively, closes underneath, now, you don't have to trade that big drop straight back into the range, but no. what you get the opportunity to trade is the pull back into the level, right? So yeah. you see that big drop in there and you're saying, look, if we've taken the liquidity there, we're now back in that range. Like Dank is saying, we're now back in an area that has had a tradable history. You can tell, you know, there's buyers and sellers within that space. So you can play that into how you then trade it. So please go ahead, man, because this is uh, this is just some glorious yeah. So. And, and literally it is all it is like you, you i saw that this was taken out i'm like well the market structure is still bearish you got a high a low i think you um a lower low lower high lower low lower high and it's making another, another low low so i can i can agree that we can all agree that the bear the, the market structure is still bearish mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't broken market structure so then i've you know you're still looking for shorts which means that whether we come back up that's not a problem and then mm -hmm. sell back off. That's not a problem. The the uh, where we'd be completely wrong is at these highs here. Mm -hmm. That's where we're completely wrong. And and once we break in these highs, then we're looking. We can flip bias because we've broken market structure. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, there, I'm like I'm like I know for a fact that this is the range that we've been playing for one, two, three, about four four weeks itself. You can say before mm -hmm. we broke out of it. So there's like you said, there's a lot of buyers and sellers here. So the, here it's going to be where what people would say choppy because price is going to go up and down, up and down before making a, a, an exact move of a breakout either on the up side or on mm -hmm. the downside so all i'm doing is i'm just splitting this out into into a level and as you can see if i just bring up my levels you can see that same uh, the the fibonacci there got the mid range the 75 percent the 25 percent and i just play this within level to level and, mm -hmm. I, and if i were to zoom in for like the example on the two hours at any moment right if you were to show me bullishness right i know what the market structure is looking for if we start showing bullishness and i can look at a look at cutting the trade so if we come back into the mid-range right into this mm -hmm. area here i'm expecting this to be a lower high for us to go back down but if we take out this high there then i'm like you know what i've taken profits here i've taken profits here i've taken some profits here as well mm -hmm. i'm taking profits at each level i'm happy to cut the fucking trade here even mm -hmm. if it comes like this and sells off i don't really mind i'm content with each with each um, level I'm taking, and I think that's a key factor that most people need to understand: taking profits in the bull market. That's um, a big, big lesson for people here, right? A really, really big lesson. Not just in investing. I know a lot of people made a lot of money in the bull run, lost a lot of money when they failed to sell at certain points. If people weren't taking profit on the way up. That's not how I trade. I'm a day trader. So for me, one of the most important lessons I learned when I when I became a professional trader, and I think one thing that everybody has to really learn is that you have to book profits. Um, yes. You know, unrealized profit isn't profit. It's all well and good. You can have that P and L flashing whatever you want. It looks good for for Twitter, but it doesn't look good in your account if you missed it. And if you're not booking that and you're not making allowance for things like your fees and stuff like that as well, that's what's going to separate you, right? Stuff yeah. like that, booking those profits, managing the drawdowns, right? Now, just before you carry on from here, Dee, we just had an interesting question. I want to take this one because you, we can't have you give up all your secrets, right? On, on, oh, on one stream. No, no, no. But I mean, I really appreciate you sharing that. I mean, that's 
that's alpha guys that people would have sold you a course for 10 grand for right so really do listen watch this back learn from it right and just learn how you can trade with it we're going to share all of trader dank's details with you as well so you can sign up and get, it, make sure you follow him man make sure you get on his youtube and you know more about him and what he does but we've got yoni here who's got a good question interested in how you interested in how you both find confirmation on low time frames for example five minute closure or price pushing away from a key place that you're watching so just to give you my perspective on this, something I cover quite a lot on my streams, very similar to, to Dank, I'm waiting for price to come into my key level. What I'm typically watching for on a low time frame is if I'm looking to short the market like here, and we're using what Dank's got on the screen at the moment here, I'd be waiting for price to come up on a low time frame, sweep a high prior to it to take liquidity. Then I want to see price break down and close below the low that sweeps the high right? So I'm going to do some sessions on this, like D is showing on there, right? You've got that situation, the top red line, you get your sweep, the bottom one, you're getting the close below, you get your retest, and then you're in. Or if you get a fast move away, I'm then looking for that inefficiency, that fair value gap for price to kind of pull back into before it then sells off lower, all right? Now, and exactly as D is showing here, you come up, you take that liquidity, you come into a key area of price, right? We're on the low time frames. We see that breakdown. We watch the liquidity get swept. We break down. We have that retest. We enter, right? Now, I know that sounds really, really simple, guys, and I know that it's not, right? But actually, one of the key things you'll learn from traders like Dank and like Muro as well is you've got to really own your strategy, the way that you view the market, and you've got to make sure that you're consistent in the way that you trade it, right? Now, I've seen Dank on trades, on groups, I've seen him on Twitter, for Christ's sake, pick four or five winning trades in a row, lose one, the loss is water off a duck, duck's back, straight off the back of it, bang, because I know where I'm wrong. I know I've taken my one hour hit, bang. Not just that, most people get put off at that point. What you see from exceptional traders is that entices them because there's a plan for both ways, yeah? Hell, if I really thought things were going short here and my bias is correct and we start going long, then we've got a pump in coming. So I'm going to look at ways I can step in and pick a nice clean target higher. So for Dank, what I would suggest is to really get involved in his stuff, watch his stuff, get yourself on YouTube, follow him, get on Twitter. We're going to share his details. He's at Trader Dank, D-A-I-N-K. I'm going to share it with you while Dank gives us some closing thoughts on this. We've got a few minutes left before we shut up shop. So Dank, I'm going to pass this back to you, brother. I'm just going to share a couple of your little bits and pieces on there so people can follow you. But what I would suggest for questions like that is ask away if you're inside the nest, come and give me a shout, whatever, I'll happily help you. But get yourself on YouTube, get yourself on Twitter, follow Dank, go and ask him, watch his stuff, and you'll learn so much from it. So D, my bro, do you want to give us some some closing banter? Give us some closing love. Finish up your piece here or throw at us what you will. Bro, like if I, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for giving us giving me an opportunity here. So big love to you as well. And oh. a shout out to BC, BC, man. Like the geezer <laughs> fucking works like an animal here, man. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, he's coming out li li live and direct to you. And he's been out a busy day and he's been really busy with the bird nest. So, you know, show some love to him as well. Follow him on Twitter. That's the, he's the main guy, really. Thank me. You, I'm just fucking, I'm kind. bullshitting here. He's, he's too kind. I think we, we all are, man. What you can see from this guy is you get honesty, you get straightforward. And do you know what? You can argue with him all you want, but you can't argue the results. Man, where's all of his trades live? Where's everything he's got out there? We've got his information on there at Trader Dank, right? That's Trader, D A I N K, right? D A I N K. Little cool at symbol you'll see behind his head as well on that. So give him a follow, learn from his stuff, and make sure you're. One bit of advice I'll give before I let some closing words from Dank is where I was very fortunate in trading, an area that allowed me to progress in the way that I did, was I was lucky to be surrounded by good people. And I was lucky because the whole space is, you know, there's good, there's lots of great people in this space and there's lots of not so great people in this space. The great thing about these bear markets is it tends to purge a lot of them out. But if you spend your time making sure the people that you're with, the community that you're trading with, the people that have got your back and you're learning from are the right kind of people, the best people, people like the Bird Nest, my colleagues here, people like Trader Dank, people like Muro, right? People like Alex Kaibar and the CMTs we had on earlier. If you spend your time and you put your energy and resources into studying with good people, it will pay dividends, right? So ignore the noise. Twitter's full of noise. Strip the noise away. Bro, Find there's a really so much good out there. there. Oh, mate, just like, ridiculous. There's, 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 there's geezers there still talking about DCAing from. from <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's. What are you there's talking geezers. about that's in 65K, right? <laughs> And, there's, and the worst thing is, you, there's, there's guys all showing like, oh, yeah, it's a bullish divergence. 
from fucking January, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> are you, talking about? Mate, you know, as soon as it goes off, they'll be back on there seven months later. Like I told you so, man. That's I it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, like I, I think I, I, the main thing really is is don't you should like in this bear market you should be able to tell who the Moon Boys are. These mm. are the guys you don't follow. In my opinion, I think I think there's, it's a bunch of noise. Hundred percent, man. Just make sure you're following good people. And do you know what? We're, we've unfortunately got to close this up in a minute and I could just go on this forever. But I just, as this closing note, I think aside from all the other alpha that Trader Dank has just shared with you guys, please rewatch this. Make sure you dive into this. Make sure when you you have the opportunity to get access to people like this, that you, you really dive into the detail, right? And it goes back into our idea about cutting away the noise. Find people who are willing to teach you. Find people who are willing to go deep with you and that are willing to put that time in and want you to understand because they're the people that are giving you genuine value. Um, and on that note, my brother, I just, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, I just... Yeah, well, you're, you're, right. you're a really special guy, man. It's someone I've, I've just had such a pleasure. Thankfully, again, thanks to knowing good people. Thanks to knowing Burb. Thanks to being part of the nest. Gave me the opportunity to meet you. Someone I looked up to when I got into the trading space, you know, along with SZ. And now to be on this, sharing this with you, sharing charts with you like this is just a real pleasure, man. So thank you so much. No, a huge you. shout out to you, man, to your family no, no, no. and to your friends. Easy. and to the Honestly. Man. <laughs> bro, to, to be honest, bro, like every I've, this is what I've met you two times, right? One in Paris, uh, just recently in the London conference as well. Yeah. I've had an amazing time with you. You're generally <laughs> one of the best guys I know. Always helpful, always you know, always willing to put himself out there, and he's just a bubbly geezer. So thank you so much for actually you know you know allowing me to get to know you as well. Because the one thing is in this in this space, you, there's a lot of toxicity. Especially mm. you're going to see a lot more in, in the bear, in the bear market. People mm. are really like stressed out, like uh, losses you know, holding from all time high or holding whatever the, the, the thing the, without taking any profits, they don't know what the fuck to do as well. And like you, when you meeting people, you've always, you're always a little bit uh, like stressed out. Like for me, the first time I met you, I was like, a, like, um, it was a weird one because we fucking met at that, at that hotel in Paris. I lost my voice and I've been shouting. Yeah, you lost your voice as well. And it, you know, it's like, you picked me out. You're like, you're like, are you Trader Dank? I'm like, shit, how the fuck does this guy know me? <laughs> <laughs> and we spent the whole night just talking, me, you, Sebastian, yeah. and a few others. Oh, man, yeah. Some Jimmy of too as well. Man, Jimmy was there. Obviously, yeah. Bird, we had Phoenix, didn't we? JJ Cycles. Who JJ joined too as well, yeah. We... Ago. Mate, we got Jay coming on. He's on the stream, I think, with us tomorrow morning as well. He's a lovely guy uh, as well. Oh, mate, Dusty BC, man. We got Quinton as well another legend yeah. from paris um i mean it's a really good point though i think when you commit if you take the time and take the risk to commit to an industry and or to something that you love and something you're passionate about mm -hmm. forget the noise forget the negativity do what you do be the person you are i always say look pursue what you want to pursue put yourself into it just don't hurt people unnecessarily in the process right and you get the real pleasure of having things that like we've had and, and getting to meet people like dank and all the legends that we were with together in Paris and everywhere and stuff. Yeah. And I know he's not on the stream today, right? But I have to share this as well because I know we've both got so much love for the guy. SC absolutely has. Live stream at 7 p.m. Right? Yeah. 7 PM. Go and check that out. Bitcoin for ledges. Guys yeah. spent a lot of love in the space. The just trust me, you ain't going to get as close to him as you'll get to Trader Dank. I promise, right? You can get access to this guy at a time like when SZ was in his infancy, right? To make the most, find the legends that are on the up and this guy is on the up so look i'm going to leave it there man because otherwise i'm just going to chat at you all day yeah right? we can go on all day and yeah, honestly yeah. big love to you the family i'm definitely going to come and see you again soon all right man 100%. let's hang out like but as well. thank you so much good luck to you everything that's going on with trader dang the country club right we're going to share some info for him on there get him on there get and follow him on twitter and just learn from this guy my brother thank you very much everybody that's tuned in for this live you're absolute legends and i know thousands of people are going to get value from this watching it on recording as well so once again a huge shout out to trader dank thank you to everyone we're coming back tomorrow with loads of alpha and look forward to catching you all around the nest <laughs>